So those of you who know me know that I have this uh, fascination with engineering and making things better or sometimes worse through the use of hardware and that kind of thing. One of my favorite people in this regard is James Gurney. Um, he is, if you watch his blog, just ridiculously curious and always trying to experiment with things and ways of doing things and ways of looking at things. And I really admire that. And anytime somebody that I admire says you should build something, I have to do it. And so here we're looking at my sketchbook, sketchbox, pochade, easel box. Pochade. I don't actually know if that's how it's said. Now that I think about it really hard, I might be making up the pronunciation, but why not? So I have an Amazon Basics tripod, which is really cheap and very light. Um, light is good for carrying it around, and but not so good for not blowing over in the wind. It has a tendency to like fall over if you sneeze on it. Um, but you can also, and this is another thing I stole, inspired from James Kearney, is hang your book bag, backpack, backpack from the center with like a carabiner, and that has a pulls it down into its its weight moment. Um, so then my actual sketch, moment of truth, here it is. It is reclaimed wood. It's a, it's a fun reclaimed wood. I love the change in size here and here and the, this. So I have built it very, very typically James Gurney because you got to start somewhere and I haven't built a second one yet. Um, you can see from this that I have actually um, cut the center bit out of the second portion of hinge so that it can fold down completely, and I've also um, recessed the hinges so that they actually start, it's probably easier to see on this side, there's a piece of wood that I cut out, um, they actually start halfway up, which means it really, really does close all the way, which is really nice. Um, now, my magnets are on the outside because I'm crazy and I use this four different ways. My T-nut, which fits a standard tripod, um, it goes all the way through both sides. Uh, so I can use this as a bottom plate this way or a bottom plate this way, but I have a tendency to use it as a back plate where the sketchbook goes, so I use it like this. Um, this would go on this side if that were the case, and the reason is because this is where all my magnets are. I've got four little magnets on either side, and then the four in the middle that are larger and stronger and kind of ridiculous, and then the same two here which are the larger ridiculous magnets. And this is because I used to have the, um, the metal trays from Daiso. They were like a dollar. And I used to mix my casings and my acrylics in them, uh, except <laughs> this is theater. <laughs> and we have a tendency to recycle and reuse things as props if they suit without thinking about it. So I actually reused my Daiso trays as a prop in a show that we had to light something on fire on. And so fire and trays don't mix, and I don't have those trays anymore. So... Um, but the magnets used to hold those metal trays really well. Uh, but lately I've been doing mostly watercolors, so I'm using it like this um, with the magnets on the bottom and the catch plate on the back. And, um, the catch plate is nice because I can take the catch plate and just put it into the quick release that is on the tripod. And so it doesn't require screwing in or out or anything. And so once you get it here, the angle is completely adjustable and it does a really good job of holding its shape for whatever you want. Because the magnets are on the bottom and because none of the tools that I'm working with are made of metal and the magnets don't necessarily help me in that point, I've done the ridiculous thing, which makes me really happy because I love ridiculous things, and made this um, friction mat. The same kind you would find in like a drawer or on top of your refrigerator. And I laced it with thread and made these dangly bolts because if it's not ridiculous and overly engineered, then well, did I have fun? <laughs> no, that's not true. I do love them though. So this mat goes here with the bolts hanging over the edges. And the bolts do a really good job of finding those corner magnets. There you go. Come on. And the fun thing about this is I thought about gluing it down, except I realized I didn't want it glued down because I would like to be able to remove it. I actually really like this reclaimed wood. Um, it's kind of special to me. In any case, 
I didn't want to glue the mat to it. So now I have a mat that is stuck to it that can be rinsed off when I get paint on it or water on it or sneeze on it. I don't actually sneeze on my paintings. I don't know why I keep saying that. But it's also stuck in place because each one of these bolts has found one of those corner magnets. And so it's not, it's not going anywhere and it's not moving. And now I have tension, uh, friction, tension, friction on the palette, uh, which is nice because I have these watercolor cases made of plastic. And this is the koi. And I glued the friction mat to the bottom of the koi as well. But you can, I don't know if you can see that I tried to um, grind away some of the koi case because for some reason they engineered this so that it doesn't lay flat. And that bothers me because that's me mixing water on a case that the lid is crooked on. And that's an engineering fail that I can't fix because it's a proper engineering fail. Um, but with the friction mat on the bottom of it and the mat on the bottom of this, that doesn't, doesn't go anywhere. Um, and sometimes you don't even need the friction mat on the second piece. This is my dirty Windsor & Newton case, which I have to rubber band shut because I broke it. Um, maybe it won't open. There we go. Uh, so <laughs> it's so dirty. Um, that stays on there pretty well, too, without having to worry about it going anywhere. And it doesn't even have the mat underneath it, and it stays really well because friction. Um, I don't actually use the Koi and the Windsor and Newton at the same time. So one at a time would be great. This is my sketchbook, which I have taken a, another leaf out of Jane Gurney's, James Gurney's books. Let's not say stolen, but let's say inspired. And I named it Flight because the first, I think, yeah, is a really bad marker drawing of Angel's Flight in LA. And then the second was the another marker drawing of the building up top before they kicked me out because sometimes when you plein air, people don't appreciate it and they kick you out. Just find one I like. Dandelion. Messy. Sue Dandelion. So that's there. I have these clamps from Home Depot. They're typically just a dollar. They have the nice rubber edges. I used to use the rubber bands to hold it to the easel, but rubber bands are useful in other moments and other places. <laughs> And so, like like the uh, Daiso trays, they were reappropriated at some point. But these these have tended to stay with the sketchbook, and they're actually better at holding it than the rubber bands. I know some people don't like the clips, but I say don't work it if it's not or don't break it if it's not working. They also come in really teeny, <laughs> which makes me really happy because I don't know, teeny things are cute, right? I don't. So teeny clips. Sometimes I'll use these to hold pages together. At the bottom corners like that. Um, rubber band. My favorite part of this moment is that I used to have um, water cups that I would put on here, and then I had the water cups that I glued the magnets to the bottom of, and then at one point I had a metal water cup, which was interesting, that would connect to the magnets. But I found that the water cup, because I'm painting with my right hand, was always like in the way, and then I could move this over here and put the water cup here. It just, it wasn't working. I wanted a cup that was like away and down. And so I came up with this guy and he's just a plastic cup that I tied a string to and glued and then glued a hinge to the back. And then I also glued this door, or bent this door plate 90 degrees into a 90 degree angle and glued it underneath and epoxied and stuff. So now this doesn't fall down. So when it's being held, it stays like this. Because it's plastic, it's really lightweight, and because I have those absolutely ridiculous magnets underneath, um, if it's on there, it doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. It hangs down to the side like this. I can actually fill it with water up to about halfway, and it still won't fall off because those magnets are, I could probably pick this up by its magnets. Um, and then when I use the easel, when I use the easel the other way with the magnets on top, like a metal tray, because I kept the bottom of it clear at 90 degrees, it literally just sits on top and it actually kind of magnets through the bottom too. Um, it sits on top and the, then it's got gravity and magnets, so then it's really not going anywhere. But for this purpose, um, right here, terribly, terribly strong magnets. This is really good. And that, my friends, is basically 
my ridiculous modifications to my sketchbook easel inspired and stolen from James Gurney. You really should watch his blog. He does all kinds of stuff. Thanks for watching.